three-dimensional map is then used to guide the injections to a fraction of a millimeter, hitting the predetermined areas needing most help. Although these stem cells are from the patient's bone marrow, once placed in his heart, something amazing has happened. It turns out that uh, when you put one of these stem cells in the middle of a bunch of cells that are all heart cells, they sort of mimic uh, the environment. The cells are very smart in a way to turn into the kind of tissue that we need to turn them into. We think that from one standpoint, the stem cells are able to secrete many different very beneficial substances that may, for example, help grow blood vessels. They may also turn in to, let's say, a piece of blood vessel or turn into heart muscle. And that's another mechanism. So at this point, we're really not sure exactly uh, how that works, but we have a fair idea. They may not know how it works, but it seems it does work. The image on the right is a map of Nelson's heart just 16 weeks after his operation. So we've been looking at this map at the time of injection, and you can see here at the site of where the cells were injected, we have a marked improvement, which is demonstrated by this large purple area, which represents now normally contracting muscle. And if we look at the other side of the heart, we see also a marked change in this large red area of weak heart muscle now turning into a near normal, stronger beating heart. So far, 14 patients have undergone the procedure, and all, like Nelson, have made remarkable progress. Every other day I walk four kilometers, and I don't feel anything. I swim in the ocean, and I've now gone back to work. It's given me another life. I'm reborn. The trial is still in the experimental stage. It's unclear how the genes are turned on and off in the stem cells, but doctors are pushing ahead with new trials to verify their data. Patching up the heart seems like a fantastic way to regenerate the organ. But what if we could bypass this stage and build a new heart in its entirety? That's the ultimate aim of stem cell research, to replace organs altogether. But to do so moves the debate into an area of huge controversy. Adult stem cells may be much more versatile than was previously thought, but still their use is limited. To attempt to build a new organ from scratch requires the most versatile cells of all, embryonic stem cells, cells whose genes can switch on and off to become all the cell types in the human body, cells derived from embryos around five days old. The most exciting part of genetics without question is the genetics of development. How do you get from an egg to a human being? How do you get from a streak of tissues in the embryo to a heart? Now, if we can crack that, it's conceivable, only conceivable, that we can do the job ourselves and regrow a heart. I mean, think of the medical problems it would solve. But to solve those problems requires a step that many find repugnant. When we create embryos, specifically to harvest stem cells for experimental purposes, with the idea that the, then the embryo will be destroyed so it won't come to term, that is really dangerous. That's eugenics. That should not be the way we proceed with science. But the science is proceeding, and with such extraordinary results, the ethicist's voice may fight to be heard. Growing new organs for transplant sounds like a Frankenstein fantasy, but it's becoming reality here in Japan. This frog has eyes that were grown from scratch artificially in this lab. They work perfectly after being transplanted into the sockets of the frog by this man. Professor Makoto Ashishima has made an amazing breakthrough. He's the first scientist in the world to create from scratch a sensory organ from an embryonic stem cell. Embryonic stem cells are the building blocks of all creatures, whether frog or human. After a sperm has fertilized the egg, it begins to divide until after four or five days it's a 200 strong ball of cells. These are stem cells. At this point they have the potential to become any part of the body. If we can harness this potential and direct it, we can grow any organ of our choosing.
At the Tokyo University, Professor Asashima has taken stem cells from a tadpole embryo and cultivated them in the lab. The challenge is then to persuade the stem cells to turn into eyes. We put various inducers into a test tube with the stem cells. By altering the condition of the cells, such as changing the concentration of a protein inducer called actin, we can create different organs in the test tube. These eyes, grown in the lab, are transplanted into tadpoles who've had their own eyes removed. The next challenge is to get the transplanted eye to work. And once again, while genetics has mastered the mechanics, quite how the engine is switched on remains something of a mystery. The nerve on the eye grows towards the optical part of the brain and then it stops. A nerve then comes from the brain and the two nerves connect. At the moment, we just don't know why the nerve from the transplanted eye grows towards the brain. As the tadpoles mature, the million dollar question is, does this pioneering science actually work? Can the young frogs see through their new eyes? To find out, Professor Asashima has harnessed an unusual natural quality of the frog. If the frogs can't see, the body of the frog becomes dark. If the frogs can see, even through one eye, they become a much lighter color, sometimes white. In this tank, you can clearly recognize the lighter color frogs that can see. Some are even white. And the darker color frogs where the transplantation hasn't worked, and they are blind. Professor Asashima's hope is that this futuristic vision could one day quite literally give eyes to sightless children. There are different degrees of blindness, but if we can grow eyes in a test tube, then there's a chance we can cure the blindness using stem cell treatment. As Professor Asashima increases his knowledge of how the genes work that govern these stem cells, he is learning to grow other frog organs, kidneys, livers, and one of the most complex organs of all, the heart. This beating frog's heart is waiting to be transplanted. It's the next objective on the professor's list. In Professor Ashashima's experiments, the stem cells are derived from embryos sexually produced by male and female frogs. The big problem for humans is that our complex immune systems instantly reject organs which contain DNA other than our own. This is why heart transplant patients have to remain on powerful immunosuppressant drugs. The only way to obtain stem cells containing purely our own genes is to make a cloned embryo. To achieve this, a human egg is stripped of its own nucleus and a new nucleus is inserted. It could come from any cell in the body. An electric shock fuses the two together and starts cell division. A cloned embryo is created. And Dr. Robert Lanza is one man doing just this.